96 degrees in the shade. This is Camille. <laughs> this is Bunny. Thank you. And this is Kat. Hello. Okay, and we're all on Reggaeville. Hi, um, Reggaeville. <laughs> And it's my pleasure to be um, talking to these two venerable reggae stars about their new album, Patriots. So it seems like a really massive undertaking. Who conceptualized the project? How did you come up with this idea? Well, uh, the idea kind of has been brewing for a while, for quite a few years, in that um, we had wanted to do a celebration of our, well, it started out as our, of our 35 years together. And um, as you said, it's a massive undertaking. It basically took us two years, so it ended up 37 years, and now it's going to 38. So um, it was a massive undertaking, but I think all of us conceptualized it. You know, Mr. Richie, Mr. Rumps, and myself, you know, we wanted to do songs with our friends like Marcia, Gregory, Toots, and Tessa, and, and you know, Michael Rose, Taras Riley. I was wanted to do something like this for a while, so it's just a no-brainer really, you know, but it just took a long time to get it done. Well, you guest artists, it reads like a who's who across generations. How did you go about selecting? Well, I think the first one was Damon and Steve, because mm -hmm. we really wanted them to do over 96 degrees. We always had that in mind. So once we started working on that, then things started to fall in place for other people, other people, and then we started picking now. Saying we would also like Marcia, we'd also like this one and that, and reaching out to various people in the industry, and um, that's basically how we did it. I mean, some of it was by um, the artists themselves showing an interest in what we were doing, and they, that allowed them to be, you know, one of the top picks or one of the easier ones to to relate to, to for them to hear the songs and to, you know and to, to get in on, on what we were doing. Do you have a favorite track? Um, I like different tracks for different reasons, mm -hmm. so I wouldn't say I really have a favorite track, but the 96 Degrees with Steve and David, I really like that, and the Spirit Lives, I like that too. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite track? Though? Spirit Lives. Okay. okay. And in terms of, you mentioned Stephen and Damien. Now you worked with Bob, um, yeah. and your sons, um, Shia and Damien yeah. were together. Is there a connection, a special connection between the Malis and the Corns? Well, I mean, I, I clearly was one of their father's biggest fans as far as I'm concerned. So, if there's, if there's a connection, I'm honored. Let me put it that way. But there's no special, you know, ambition for that or anybody trying specially for that. If it just happened naturally, then. That's cool. So what was it like working with Damien and Stephen having worked with Bob? A similar kind of energy. I mean, they're very hardworking people, particularly Damien. I mean, he's a man who don't sleep. <laughs> you know, he, does, he go to the studio at 10 o'clock in the night and he wake up back 10, and he don't leave until 10 the next morning, and then he goes to sleep and wake up back at 6 and does the same thing over again. So it's, that kind of thing gets a little bit too much wrong with Cat, you know. You know? <laughs> But I respect him still because he's a very hard worker. Okay, any similarities for you between Bob and the boys? Yeah, there are similarities, you know, same kind of energy. Um, I like Damon, I like Stephen. Um, and I think we, The Patriots is a good album. I like Marcia Griffiths, I like um, uh, Taurus Riley, mm -hmm. Dean Fraser is also on it. It, it really is an all-star yes. lineup just across. I mean, you have the reggae queen. Right. You know, you have you know the, the rising king. prince in, in Taurus. You know, you have the sons of the of kings. Yeah, and yes. the rising princess to Intessa. Intessa and Shane. Yeah. I mean, that voice. I For mean, that, that is an amazing, Absolutely. amazing. But anything stood out? Any special stories from the process of making the album and working with all these different people? Yeah, the um, the, the whole concept of the album is really dedicated to um, Paul Bogle. Um, and we think the Patriots, who are the artists performing with us, is a continuation of that legacy that Jamaica is really powerful. We have good people, we have good artists, and we should continue this process. And it was a pleasure for a group that's third world, that's 37 years old, to have 
um, these young people performing with us and really was delighted to come and work with us and enjoy it and it was really great, you know. It is great. So 30, we're pushing 38 years. <coughs> How does a band stay relevant, stay current over, I mean, almost four decades? That's a good question. I, I think first you have to love the company that you're keeping and we really like each other. I mean, I really check for cat, although sometimes you don't check for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I boy. think that is it. I mean, that the truth. We like <laughs> <laughs> and, we, we, and we enjoy what you're doing. And, and, um, it is something that we decided, I think, to do a long time ago to really make sure that this thing stay together as an example, you know. And I think we have succeeded to show that um, the Jamaican group or Jamaican organization of different minds, different personality, different character can really come together as one and produce just one product, which is the music, you know. Okay. And it's I mean, you gentlemen are reggae royalty, really. And um, tell me about the title, Reggae Ambassadors. Yeah, and uh, the title just came us, up. Yeah, we didn't we give ourselves, ourselves a title. A title. Yeah. But it's, 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 we it's, did a song called Reggae Ambassadors. And then the title was bestowed upon us, mm -hmm. based on the song. Mm -hmm. And appropriately so. Yeah, yeah, appropriately I, so, because you've, you've taken it. You've taken the music. And we have worn that with honor. I mean, the, we, we are ready ambassadors, you know? so we give thanks to that. A friend of mine who is an aspiring singer, <coughs> I said to him one day, I said, you know, you're doing an R. Kelly style. He says, no, 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 don't compare me to R. Kelly. I'm going after Bonnie Rhodes. Um, you have a voice, instantly recognizable, inspired generations of singers. Um, what does it feel like to have a legacy like that? Just wish she had the cash yeah. I kill her. <laughs> but not the reputation. <laughs> no, I agree uh, with you. It's a, good, it's a good feeling. Mm -hmm. and, um, I, I don't really pay it much mind because all of those people who say they might take stuff from me, I also take stuff from them. Mm -hmm. And I listen to them and I love them. Like Toots. Uh, Toots always tell me that I'm his favorite singer. Toots is my favorite singer. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of my favorite singers, you know, I was Sam last night, so the community is so small and we feed off for of one another, you know, but it's hard for people to say that, but I don't really put it on my shoulder and walk around with that, you know. Mm -hmm. okay. What's your all-time favorite third world song? That's a question people ask all the time and yeah, it's, it's, you could never answer that, I mean, so there's so many different, songs. yeah, and there's so much, you know, um, feel a little better. <laughs> That's what I, mean. I went to um I went to the last night to the opening of Chris Blackwell opened the airport, you know, in Araka yesterday and after we went over to his place and he said to me, Take out the iPad and put on some third world mm -hmm. and while everybody, the Prime Minister and everybody was there eating dinner and thing and thing and the third world music started to play man and it's like the third world music just cut through the evening that <laughs> Blackwell just passed me and him just said, great, eh? <laughs> yeah, you know, and um, I, I look at the, I look at terror music like that. It has a certain, especially that album like 96 Degrees. Yes. When we put that album on and the first bell goes up, plong, and Jaguar mm -hmm. start, it's like it has a certain mood. The first two have that. And the, fir the first album to, with the, with the Night Creatures mm -hmm. and then going into Saturn. It, it has that too. It's a very special thing about Third World and it's very difficult to find a Third World tune, an all-time favorite Third World tune. Mm -hmm. I think Third World music, I describe it as heady. It just, yeah. you know, it, it, it definitely gives you a buzz. And I mean, I since I have you gentlemen here, it, for me it's a toss-up between Try Jello yeah. and Always Around. So okay. Always Around on the romantic side and then yeah. Try Jello on the spiritual. Yes. Spiritual side. Why do you pick two good shots? Yeah, those are, I mean, great, great tunes. But we, we don't even get into... Shots. That's a top girl, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm going to just fire off some tunes now and you tell me what comes to mind when you hear these titles. Um, now that we've found out. Uh, Kenny Gamble and Leonoff. 
<laughs> to me, what comes to mind is the next time that we're going to play, which is um, in St. John's in the Virgin Islands. I want to big up everybody in St. John's in the Virgin Islands, by the way, because they're wonderful people. I'm going to begin them up. But the reason I said that is because I'm looking forward to probably performing that song for the 700,000th time. And still, it amazes me the effect that song has. And I'm just think, I always think, what will it be the next gig? What will it be the next gig? How can a song be so durable? Mm -hmm. 96 Degrees I Know That We Found Love are two very durable songs that span a hell of a length of time with popularity. So that's kind of what comes into my mind when I Committed. think over that. Willis Stewart. I just want to say. Now, Willie was one of the writers of that song, Willie and Stephen Stewart. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when we think of that song, we remember him. But I just think of, um, I think of the video. I think of its popularity in Jamaica, mm -hmm. you know, as an R&B crossover reggae song. Mm -hmm. I think it has a tremendous popularity in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, basically that. Okay. 96 you know. degrees. Paul well, Bogle. Paul Bogle, the story, you know, of the song. and. And the fact that it has lasted so long and never really was a major hit on any chart or, or as such, but still is worldwide popular, I mean, you know. Always around. Irvin Jared Carrot. <laughs> That's a great song. You should listen to the Dean Fraser version. I did. I yeah, did. I did. And that is actually my favorite track of... Yeah. Um, Patriots because okay. it's taken something that's very dear to me yeah. and just put a, a mystical, a mystical yeah. twist on yeah. it. Yeah, he did a good job. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice that's somebody that's very passionate about the music. Yeah, very and passionate. a hell of a musician. Yes, and, and looking to really send it forward. I mean, you see him working with the Tauruses <coughs> and Dwayne Stinson, to, you know, some strong shoulders to take it forward. Yeah. Yes, yes, for real. Okay, now when can your fans see you live next? Well, you can see us live next in St. John's in Virgin Islands on the 29th of, of this month. We're really looking forward to going there. We're, you know, they've been doing some wonderful work down there to really big up this show that we went down there to do. And, um, you know, we, we love that very much. And in Jamaica, we'll be at the Palma Palmyra Resort on February the 11th for the, for the big show to raise books for, for school children. So, you know. Looking forward to seeing all of those who can make those shows. And you've, I mean, obviously in terms of reggae, I mean, we just have to look at the album and also like your, your, your past that you recorded or worked with anybody who is anybody in reggae. Um, is there anybody across genres who you'd like to work with that you haven't had the opportunity to work with as yet? Quincy Jones. Never too late for a show already. And I'd love to work with Kenny Gamble again. Kenny Gamble from Philadelphia is a great person. I'd love to work with him. And I'd love to work with Stevie Wonder again. And also Carlos Santana again. Right, Mr. No, I didn't do dig out my drawer already. Really, so. <laughs> okay. Now, let's say you gentlemen were stranded on a desert island somewhere and you could only have three albums. Which three would you choose? Three of our albums? But no, three albums, just for your listening pleasure. Could be yours, could be anybody's. Just Marvin Gaye, what's going on? I'll pick that one too. Um, I'd also would love to have um, Isaac Hayes' first album, we have with um, the long song, the one half of the album side is yeah. even with that album. Yes. Yeah. And James Brown big playback album. <laughs> <laughs> I like to have Bob Marley catch a fire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mommy gave what's going on too. And um bye. Bye Lord. <laughs> Just one more. I'd have to pick a Steel Pulse, you know, Hands Out mm -hmm. Revolution or something like that, because I really love them in their early albums. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would pick one of their albums as one of my favorite too. All time favorite. I think Hands Revolution is one of my all time favorites. But 
you know, it would be almost as if that would be like on a B team. Mm -hmm. But my A team would be definitely have on what's going on and catch a fire. Okay. Yeah. I know there's somebody else, but I can't think of it right now. But now, as a reggae ambassadors, how you feel about the current state of reggae music? Well, I mean, there's not some good things happening. I mean. I don't see this current dancehall trend necessarily as being reggae music, but when we're talking reggae music, there's good things happening. There's Itana mm -hmm. doing some good work. There is um, some of the young uh, Phantom Mojas and the, you know, I Octanes and all these people that are doing some reasonably good work. So, as far as reggae music is concerned, I just think that the only thing that I think has hurt reggae music is too much juggling, mm -hmm. too much rhythm first and then the song. Mm -hmm and not sung first with the rhythm design for the song. I think that it could do a lot more of that, mm -hmm. you know, to let the music have more staying power. But I don't really have much problem with the kids, how they're, how they're going about what they're doing. I think they're doing a good job. You mentioned Dwayne Steven, you mentioned Taurus. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're doing, you know, they're doing good work. Not every song they do is as good as the one before, but I mean, that's to be expected from any artist. I mean, you have, in a span of time where an artist has 20 or 30 songs, you may have 5 or 6 of them that are really, really great, mm -hmm. and then you may have 15 that are reasonable and a couple of them that are not so. So, it's like a painter, you know, you have 30 paintings, but 6 or 7 of them are huge hits, and the rest of them, some of them are medium great, some of them are lower. So, I, I don't really have much bad things to say about Jamaican music. I just want them, I just hope that the artists don't get too involved in this, you know, overplaying up the, the bad vibes and the, the lewdness and the nastiness and thing and the, and give the people some some good food for you, you know? Bonnie? Yeah, I love the energy, man. I love... Um, I was in Montego Bay the day and there was five cars in the parking lot and all five was playing a different vibes cartel and I, I, I like vibes. I like, I like the energy. I love the energy. I love all the young people. I do and I love the uh, Jamaica School of Music where they're turning out some excellent musicians. And I just like what's going on. I like I love the vibes. You think it's in a good place now? Say that again? No, I am saying if you think it's in a good place now. Yes. Okay. What would you want Third World's <coughs> legacy to be? Just what it is. It came and we did quality music and we left good music behind. That's all. That's it. What is it that you think resonates so much about reggae? I mean, across the globe, you find reggae lovers, every shape, every size. What is it about the music you think that just gets people so passionate? Well, it's the rhythm, the feeling and the message. You know, and that's just simply it. You know, the rhythm is different to what has perpetuated through the years in America with rock and roll and over in Europe with rock. And the message is positive for the most part and therefore this is what I think is is what appeals to everyone. And the island of Jamaica is part of that whole appeal in a big way. Because people really see the island of Jamaica with all the little idiosyncrasies that we have and so on. And um, it has impact. It has real impact. So I would definitely just say that it's it's a combination between our lifestyle, our culture, the rhythm and the positive message that the music has portrayed throughout the years is why I think people around the world like prayer music. Right? Reggaeville. This is Bonnie Rocks, Cat Court. God bless all the best. You got to do it one in time. I don't want to come and mess with us. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.